from the History Yogi podcast, this is Dave. The substation, an independent arts venue at Armenian Street, recently announced its impending closure to much dismay after operating for 31 years. Today, we speak to Mr. T. Sasidharan, cultural medallion winner and former artistic director of the substation, on the substation's history and significance. We also discuss what needs to change in the state's approach to the arts and whether Singapore has a place for art that makes one uncomfortable. Thank you very much, Mr. Sasi, for joining us today. Could you briefly share with us your career as a theatre practitioner? Uh, sure. Thank you for having me, Dave. Uh, it's a real privilege. I've been working in theatre for 40 years, and my work has been of various stages. During my time in school, I began working in school productions, which can only be considered as a kind of amateur pursuit in theatre. But subsequently, as I moved on to university, I began working with the professional and semi-professional theatre companies in Singapore under quite renowned local directors. And uh, initially, my work in theatre consisted principally of acting. And uh, I would learn on the job because at that, at that time, when I was younger, there was no opportunity for anyone to really do training in theatre in Singapore. You had to go abroad. And uh, my family was not uh, able to afford to send me abroad to, to study theatre. Definitely, the times were different then. And um, we, we couldn't afford that kind of education. So my work in theatre... Until I was in university, consisted primarily of semi-professional work that, that would take place outside of my classes, outside of the work, the, the work that I was doing to earn a, a living at night primarily. So I would, I would attend workshops. I would read as much as I can. I would take every opportunity working with a director uh, in a play to learn the craft of acting. But at the same time, I was also producing theater. I was doing small directing work. I was also managing companies. 20 years ago, this was how theater was done in Singapore. We had to do everything. There was the, the kind of specialization and professionalization that we see today, the kind of divisions of labor of the theater uh, in Singapore today were non-existent at the time. Actors, directors, writers would do everything in order to mount a production. And it was an excellent learning opportunity for me. Also, occasionally there would be artists who would come through, teachers who would come through, who would have workshops, and we would learn from them, you know, uh, whenever the opportunity afforded itself. So it was a very informal learning process, but as I look back now, I realize it was actually a lifelong learning process. I was always learning theater, always trying to better my craft skills and uh, uh, getting every opportunity to, to collaborate. So that's been 40 years of work. And then, of course, I joined the, the Straits Times when I started writing about theater and the arts as a, as a visual art critic as a critic of theatre, of film, generally about culture. And at that time, I began to develop an interest in the theory of aesthetics and about artistic criticism and reviewing. And again, I was given deep insights into what was possible about the articulation of creative work and the articulation of cultural products generally. And it was at that time when I was in the Straits Times that Paukul, who I, whom I had worked with before as a director, and with him, uh, with him directing me primarily, uh, asked me if I would like to take over as artistic director of the substation. The call came in late 1995, and by 1996, by April 1996, I had already taken over as artistic director of the substation. And the next five years or so, were the most intensive period of learning and collaboration and practice 
that I've had in my life. And it was also marked the time when I became a full-time artist, dedicating all my hours to creating work, to curating work, to directing work, to making theatre and, and art in general. So the substation was really the field upon which I understood what it is to be a, a contemporary artist in Singapore. And subsequently, after about five years at the substation, uh, again in collaboration with Paukum, we decided to, to create this, this program. It was then called the Theatre Training and Research Program, which was a program to train contemporary actors in Singapore based on a model of practice that emerged from Singapore. And so this is the program that I'm running now. Now it's called the Intercultural Theatre Institute, and it's been running now for 20 years. And for the last 20 years, I have basically dedicated myself to teaching, to theory of acting and theatre, and to, to the practice of making original contemporary work. So in a nutshell, that's been my career in the arts, yeah. You mentioned the substation, of course, and your long friendship and collaboration with theatre legend Kuo Pao Kun. When the substation was set up in 1990, what were the objectives for it in terms of contributing to the art scene in Singapore? I wouldn't say that they were objectives. They were more actually like a, a vision for the art scene in Singapore. You must remember that in 1990, which actually predates even the, you know, the establishment of the National Arts Council, there wasn't any coherent cultural policy or management of the arts in Singapore as we had today. There, there were many companies. You must understand that the 1990s was a very unique and a peculiar phase of development uh, in the arts in Singapore. Several new companies, theatre companies, were established. Companies like TNS, companies like Theatre Works, com companies like Action Theatre. Many companies were, were emerging at the same time, not just in English theatre, but in theatre right across the gamut of languages that were available for theatre in Singapore. Tamil theatre, Malay theatre, Chinese theatre. There was an amazing efflorescence of interest and commitment and ambition, which marked, I think, a, a unique phase of development of independent theatre companies, independent theatre enterprise. And to my mind, there has never, ever been a time like that since after the, the new millennium, after 2000. We've never had a similar kind uh, of dynamism and growth in theatre. And the establishment of the substation was part of that tremendous impetus to find a way of working with contemporary theatre. In other words, theatre which is our own, theatre which is Singaporean, practices in the arts which are based in the here and the now and do not hark back to cultural hinterlands far away or to traditions from which we've been disconnected. So the ambition of the substation, the objective of the substation, if we were to put it in those terms, was to nurture this efflorescence of contemporary practice. And in all its genres, not just in theatre, but in the visual arts, in music, you know, uh, in, in writing, later on, even in film. So this was the, the seedbed, as it were, this was the germ that essentially enabled contemporary artistic practice to be established as a valid kind of artistic work in Singapore. And Paukun's vision was to be as inclusive and to be as to admit as different, diverse kind of practices under the umbrella of the substation. That's what I think the substation was originally intended to be. You yourself took over as artistic director from uh, Pao Kun from 1996 to 2000. What were some of your own priorities for the substation? My own priorities for the substation 
it was very clear when I took over as artistic director. I understood immediately why we needed to develop our own contemporary tenor. We needed to develop our own contemporary inflection of practice. This was very critical. But we can't do that without craft skills. We can't do that without training in technique. We can't do that without a focus in the process. So one of the most important things I instituted as artistic director of the substation when I took over was to create a residency program that would enable artists to work on their craft skills, to work on their practice, uh, to work essentially to hone their technique and methodologies, to give them a chance to reflect and think and articulate what they want to do as artists. And so some of the artists who joined this program at that time are now established, not just in Singapore, but internationally. Uh, they, they include people like Zai Kuning, they include people like Tang Man Kit, they include people you know, like uh, William Teo, who unfortunately has passed on. Then there was Gapin and Theatre Ox. These were people who substation supported, not just in terms of giving them an opportunity or a platform to work, but we provided them with a stipend, which enabled them to focus on their craft and their skills. This for me was one of the most important things that I think I brought to the substation. The other important thing was a series of filmmaking workshops. You must understand that at that time, there was a deep interest in filmmaking. And of course, you know, subsequently that has, that has emerged into, into the kind of film work that has earned Singapore an international reputation as far away as, as, uh, as South Korea and Cannes. Singaporean works are be, being watched with respect and with admiration. But it began at the substation with film workshops, what we called guerrilla film workshops. These were uh, pe young people who were given a 16mm camera, who went out over the weekends to shoot films, and which were then ultimately shown at the substation theatre. And we developed a community around this. And so I think the, the development of a community around a practice, around an, a, a way of doing the arts, was some of the most important things I would think I established. It wasn't just about programming. It wasn't just about platforming. It wasn't just about showcasing. But it was going back to the process and enabling the artist to focus on the process of working. Now, since the substation began in 1990, the far larger and well-funded Esplanade, which opened in 2002, has become yeah. more well-known as Singapore's main arts venue. Despite mm. this, why do you think it's important that we have a space like the substation for artists in Singapore? In all of our estimation of the quality and the quantity of work that's made from Singapore, artistic work that's made from Singapore, the numbers do not ever truly reflect what the meaning of a work is and how a work can affect and move audiences or receptors. I think the fundamental difference between the substation and all of the other institutional structures that were set up by the National Arts Council and by the state subsequently is that the substation represents a certain kind of ethical commitment to artistic practice. The substation represents a certain kind of morality about making work. It places the responsibility for art squarely on the artist. It centers its work around the artist and around artistic practice. I think that I can say quite clearly, whether you're talking about the Esplanade or you're talking about the National Art Gallery or the Singapore Art Museum or any number of other institutions that have been set up since, that these institutions 
are first and foremost institutional. They are first and foremost about the corporatization and the professionalization of practice. The artist is subsumed within that context. In the substation, we inverse that equation. The artist is at the center and the administrative management corporate network that needs to be built is built around him or her. If, to put it bluntly, Dave, mm -hmm. I'd say the substation is the conscience of Singapore arts. The substation, when it was there, was the North Star to which artists and artistic practice could be cal calibrated to. And that, I, that particular function, none of the other institutions, which are much better funded and which, are much, which have much better equipment and facilities, none of them can claim, claim that particular aspect of work which the substation did. Now, you have been very critical of the National Arts Council's handling of the substation's tenancy issue. In your opinion, what needs to change with regard to the state's approach towards arts practitioners like yourself? Basically, Dave, I think what needs to change is that we need to have a much more refined and a much more receptive mode of grant making to enable artists in Singapore. The instruments for grant making today, which are used by the NAC, simply are inadequate. This is the problem. Basically, the substation had to close because there was not enough money to keep it going. Fundamentally, that was the problem. And tied into that is the issue about housing the arts and art making within the city and the phenomenal rentals and business costs that are associated with arts practice in Singapore. Now, these are fundamental issues which only an organization which is working at a national level like the National Arts Council can solve. And I, and I think my own view is that they have been remiss in the management of the economy of the arts. One of the things that they need to do is to have basically a grant-making mechanism which is much more closely refined to the needs of the practice of arts in Singapore. Right now, the substation, like several other companies, fall within their scheme called the major company scheme. Now, this essentially, is, it essentially distributes about $16 million to 50 companies. These are companies that have been functioning in the arts in Singapore, some of them for more than 30 years. Some of them are even older, like the substation, older than the National Arts Council. And yet, this is the kind of money that we are dedicating to companies and artists who have dedicated their lives to this calling. And for me, that's inadequate. You need to have a much more varied and a much more granular approach which matches availability of funding and money to the work and the practice and the value of the output of the artist or the company. And that's not happening right now. Right now, it is basically one approach that everyone has to fit according to one approach. The mold has to change. Now, one of the greatest successes of the National Arts Council has been the Cultural Matching Fund, which essentially channels government money so that monies that are raised by independent companies can be matched by government support. This has been a, a lifesaver. But I think there is no guarantee that the Cultural Matching Fund is going to continue beyond the next two years because we don't know after the pandemic whether it's going to be continued in support by the government, whether there'll be more money. And I think this kind of uncertainty is unacceptable. The National Arts Council has to lobby, has to campaign, has to work to ensure that the cultural matching fund will continue so that companies, independent companies like the substation, 
like you know, like Theatre Works, like the TNS, uh, can plan ahead. But there is too much uncertainty. There's too much lack of. There's too much obscurity when it comes to stabilizing financial resources so that companies can continue their practice. These are, are, are deep problems which we don't talk about enough, which we don't discuss enough, and which honestly don't have the kind of accountability which they deserve. And these things, I think, have to change. In your opinion, what do you think will replace the substation in Singapore? in terms of an independent initiative by arts practitioners themselves? I really can, can't see any single entity ever replacing the substation in the kind of work that it did. Partly because I think the substation was also, was not just an idea, which many people claim it is. It wasn't just an idea, it was also a place. It was a location. And the location enabled it to sustain a community. If the substation is evicted, or when the substation is evicted from 45 Armenian Street, uh, you know, you might be able to establish something similar to it or something akin to what it was doing somewhere else on a much smaller scale, but its heart would have been ripped out. So I think we may able we may be able to replicate operations. We may be able to replicate programs. We may be able to replicate some of the platforms which the substation enabled, but I don't think we will ever be able to replicate the spirit of the substation. That will be lost. I have no doubt about that. There is always the tension between those who say that art must provoke and those who say art must be dignified and graceful. Is there a place in Singapore for art that makes one uncomfortable? I think there's no question that there is a place in Singapore for that kind of art which makes you uncomfortable, which provokes, which challenges, which makes you question. That's absolutely, absolutely vital that Singapore makes space for that kind of work. Now, it's actually a kind of a myth to say that there is this divide between work which is beautiful, graceful, elegant, and work which is provocative, challenging, and discomforting. Many of the great works of traditional theater, whether we are talking about No or Kuriyatam or Wayang Wong, many of the great traditional forms have always enabled the artist to ask critical questions. They've always enabled the artist, even while he was working for the emperor or the court, to provoke, to challenge, to push the envelope. Art has always been that way. There's never been this divide where art was simply subservient or art was simply placating the patron. There were artists who who may have chosen to do so. But the form itself, the practice of art, has always been provocative, has always challenged, has always asked questions. And the most important art, the art we continue to remember, the artists we continue to celebrate, the books that we continue to read are the ones that discomfort us. Not because they want to depress us or they want to, you know, to cause us to despair. No, hardly. They discomfort us so that we may rethink our reality, so that we may ask the questions that we need to ask in order to change the world for the better. This is what artists have done all the time throughout history, whether you're talking about traditional or contemporary. And as I said, as I, when I began this podcast, the place of the substation the role of the substation, the work of artists in Singapore is primarily located within the realm of the contemporary. And the contemporary is always about the here and the now. The contemporary is about our presence and our place as citizens in this city, 
this enormously successful, phenomenally wealthy city that has defied everything that we know about cities over the last 50 years and about economic growth. And it is precisely in this city, in this kind of a location, where we need to have art which asks difficult questions, which asks of its people why we are doing what we are doing and who are we really and what are we trying to achieve and what is our place in this new globalized, digitalized world. These questions are not always comforting, but ultimately these are the questions that are going to shape our sensibility, our soul as a people.